Hello everyone and welcome to the Cannon County Chamber Connection. And of course, as always, this is brought to you by DTC Communications and we always appreciate everything they do in our community. Uh, I am Carolyn Motley and I am with the Chamber of Commerce and I have a co-host Keith um, ready and he is with the Cannon Courier. And um, I, I have to say, this is a strange year. That's to say the least, because we are struggling to put on what events we can when the bottom line is your safety. And you have to take that into consideration because of the COVID-19 pandemic because it's here and, and we have to deal with it in some respect. But uh, the people that I have today are with organizations that are working hard to try to bring events. A lot of them will be different from what you've seen in the past because we have to do things with your safety in mind. And that's whether we like it or we don't. And I will say this, I will be glad when 2020 goes through and is out of the books because it's been difficult to say the least for a lot of reasons. But anyway, we still have some organizations that are trying to um, uh, continue bringing you activities and a lot of these organizations, like one I'm going to introduce you to right here, they, they do this, they survive by the fundraisers. And of course, the good old days was canceled because that's a massive gathering and there's really no way you can social distance or anything else in that. So that was canceled for this year, uh, along with the White Oaks uh, Art Show, a craft festival that is held at the Art Center every year in September. That has also been canceled for this year. But we do have someone with us from the Art Center because they are still trying to uh, take these guidelines for your safety and give you the plays and the entertainment uh, that you've enjoyed in the past. And I have Daxton Patrick here with me today, and he is going to talk to us about what the Art Center is still trying to Produce. <laughs> yeah, uh, try. Yes, we're definitely trying. Um, so we have uh, we have some shows coming up, uh, starting with um, Wait Until Dark, coming up in August. Um, this is a suspense thriller by Frederick Knott. Uh, there's a movie about it back in maybe sixty. I've seen that movie. Yeah, and so and this is this is a little bit different though. It's been adapted by someone else, and so it'll be a little bit different than that, but. We have that coming uh, the 14th through the 29th. And then uh, whenever we come to September, we've got the Ultimate Oldies 80s tribute show. So there's gonna be you know, um, covers of people like Van Halen, Cher, Michael Jackson, Cindy Lauper, Bon Jovi, you know, all the all the I kinda hits. liked all of them. Yeah. <laughs> all but of the above. I, I say this to um, <laughs> to round back and tell you what we're doing. Uh, to make sure people are safe t coming to this show. So, um, first off, we have a, a mask mandate. We're, we're following. Um, we're making everyone wear masks whenever they come in. We do temperature checks at the doors. And then uh, whenever you come in, you will be seated by an usher with your party. You'll be sitting with your party in a section and then distance from other people. So it's not self-seating anymore. We're going we're gonna to have ushers, which may make it easier, less Less fights, less elbows, you know. <laughs> but um, we also have um, designated entrances and exits. So we'll have arrows on the floor and things sectioned off so you can do an assembly line, you know. Not people are getting people. used to arrows because yeah. they're everywhere. <laughs> and we'll have, we'll have signs and everything. And um, when it comes to intermission, we're going to make it longer in order you know, not have a rush of people. And we'll, we'll have a little traffic control. But um, yeah, it'll just be things like that in order, for both shows, we'll be doing that. It's gonna be limited seating in order to have the distance, so. 
It's and things like this that. is all part of the Tennessee pledge, right? Yes. That and the governor has put out, and yeah. you, you know, <laughs> you just got to go with it. I mean, that's all you can do. You're still going to enjoy yourself, and you're still going to be sitting with your group that you come with. You will still be entertained, yes. Yes, mm -hmm. you will. Now, when you talk about limited seating, um, how many tickets are going to be available for each of these shows? Do you have that? We're still working it out. Um, it's definitely not our full house number. It's, it's probably more like a third to a half of that. Yeah. But uh, we're still trying to get the most seats with the right amount of distance. So we'll but, have that figured out before. And you have to remember, these go on um, on Friday night, Saturday night, and then two of the Sundays are matinees, right? Yeah. Well, so wait until dark, yeah, it's our usual um, Friday, Saturday, 7.30, matinees, too. But for the Ultimate Oldies, uh, it'll be Friday night, 7.30, and then Saturday, there's going to be a matinee at 2, and then a show at 7.30. So oh, okay. You, they were yeah. going to do the 4th through the 6th, but now it's just 4th and 5th with a matinee show on Saturday or the right. Sunday. So. Well, that's good, Dexter. Now, who's going to be in the Ultimate 80s? Show is that it's, you and oh uh, no no not uh, uh, that'll not that'll be the Bon Jovi thing huh no that's um, <laughs> um, the ultimate oldies uh, go around they they've got oh, okay. a, a 50s and they've got 60s and 70s and all kinds of like stem shows right and they go right. around the uh, Tennessee area but uh, my show Shake Rattle right, Know will be here in October 16th through the 18th at the moment and so that'll be a Saturday or Friday Saturday Sunday. Sunday being the matinee at two o'clock, and that should be the music of, uh, you know, Elvis Presley, Johnny Cash, just other '50s artists. Just I've been you know, to that twice. It's good. <laughs> you like that? Uh, it been is. Working on a show in the past uh, couple weeks. That this was. this guy right here, he's he's hmm. very calm, isn't he? Very nice, very pleasant. <laughs> he does Jerry Lee Lewis, and the first time I heard him practice. Um, he was on the piano, and he was just like he is right now. And I thought, oh, my. <laughs> Jerry Lee's kind of wild. I thought, you may have to change your demeanor. Well, when he got in the show, I didn't even think this was the same guy that I knew. <laughs> yeah, he's amazing. I mean, he's really good. <laughs> but they all are, and it's very enjoyable. Oh. But I like that kind of music, too. So We got back together recently and did some practicing. It was just like old times. We were, well, we're there you start, go. Start some things you never forget, huh? Yeah. <laughs> and it's been since February since we last did a show. So it's, it's been a minute. But that's, uh, that's what we have until October at the moment. Um, and, and, of uh, course, so many things that we're going to tell you about, uh, well, maybe with the exception of a couple, are subject to change. You know, I'm going to tell you about an event that I'm planning on, but we don't know uh, exactly what's going to happen. So, you know, some of these things may be subject to change. And some of them, just like the seating and the face, they may be a little different from what you're used to. But come on, we can adapt to this. It's you know, surely this won't last forever, I don't think. But anyway, right now, if we just hang in there and do the best we can with what we've got, we'll get through this. But the Art Center's trying, and it is open every day. The Art Center, well, I take that back. It's open Tuesday through Saturday from 10 till 2 o'clock. Yes, ma'am. And we still have art exhibits. They're taking down one right now and getting ready to put up another one. Um, and there's also the gift shop. And we've had several shoppers in in the last week, so. Yes, and, you know, say, adding to that, if, uh, if you want to know any information that we didn't cover, it's all on uh, artcenterofcc.com, A-R-T-S-C-E-N-T-E-R-O-F-C-C.com. That's uh, didn't, what did people, I know a lot of people buy season tickets. Mm -hmm. And many of the shows we haven't been able to, you haven't been able to have for, for obvious reasons. But is that, um, 
Is there anything about them? Do they hold over till the next year or exactly we, what happens with We have that? been crediting uh, season ticket holders for next year's season tickets. Okay. Um, at the moment, we are still picking out the 2021 season. Right. Considering things are in the air for the beginning of 2021. Uh, but we will have that information out as soon as we can. Uh, as soon as you can get it yeah. all finalized huh? and see yeah. what happens. <laughs> Well, all oh, right. Well, I'm 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 a big fan of the art center. I am, and I think it's this is a great facility, and I think that it is so um, productive for Cannon County, and I think we're really fortunate to have um, a facility like this because there's people that come here from other art centers and things that they kind of envy the way this is set up. So. <laughs> So we're real proud of it, and we would hate to see they work hard at doing a great job of, of bringing these plays and these concerts to you. And of course, these aren't free to the art center. You, <laughs> there's that's, money that's involved sure. here. <laughs> you and know, so, so you know, shows and donations are the way we uh, we make our uh, that's right. Up. So if uh, if you're Looking to donate during these hard times, you can always visit our website. There's a donate section. We've got the whole list. A lot of people Kid like Kindle. the arts. They do. There's a lot of fans out there. But uh, so. that's that's all I've got for uh, what's coming up in the next few months, okay. show-wise. Well, see, like I say, we're trying. <laughs> we really are trying. And it's just hard sometimes. But thank you, Dexter. No problem. You can always come on the show. Okay, I'll I'll uh, I'll keep that in mind. All right. You should have it play sometime. Uh, show. Yeah, you can Perform. channel this Jerry Lee Lewis. Yeah, that would be really oh. interesting. Maybe at Christmas you could do a little <laughs> Jerry Lee Lewis for us. <laughs> and we have a a new, I guess it's considered a sport. Uh, we have a bass fishing club. And um, I seen a picture of two boys in the paper here, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago. And listen, they had some good sized fish. Yes, they, they did. Caught. They did. And this is so this is another thing that's starting right now. They're looking for, of course, they need uh, adult leadership for these and boats right. and this type of thing. But there's a lot of kids that are interested in that. And I didn't really, really realize until last year that surrounding counties already had these fishing oh, yeah. groups. Yeah, a lot of them do. And this last year was our first season. They did really well. They competed and placed uh, top 10 in region. Uh, one of the junior, I think the junior high team, there's two kids on the junior high team, they placed in state. Uh, they got to go to state. Um, we had a junior high team consisting of two young men and a senior high team uh, consisting of two young men. And more teams can be added as long as you have, like you said, the adults that uh, will sponsor them. They have right. to have an adult with them in the boat, you know, so. The other thing is our track and field team that's, it's got some years behind it now, but I believe the two girls I see in the paper were second in the state. Well, they were, uh, they finished, well, I'm not sure what they finished in the state as far as the team was concerned last year, but the young girl, the younger of the two, uh, she finished fifth in the state meet last year. And and now, now the individual, we're kind of waiting for the individual rankings, but the the county, that's, uh, the cross country team, probably where you're getting the second, the cross country team, the girls cross country team as a whole is uh, on a preseason ranking of number two by 10milesplit.com and that is the race source uh, cross country track and field here in the state of Tennessee. Ever since Marcus Larson started that, it's done well. Yeah. I mean that whole cross country, uh, the running and everything, a lot of people involved in it, a lot of students involved in it. Um, and it's done really well every year. So we're looking for, I just, you know, you get excited about it and I love sports, but 
there's still that thing that keeps hanging in the background. Are we going to be able to continue with it once we get started? But you have the same issues with starting school or anything else. We just have to wait and see how this goes. And you the know. cross country team has been affected by this because uh, August 22nd was their uh, inaugural start. They were going to uh, participate in the Voiles Invitational down in uh, Hermitage, which is a yearly meet. Uh, people at uh, Hermitage canceled it because of the concerns for COVID-19. Right. Guys aren't even going to be able to have a region meet this year. They finished first in the region for three years in a row. Now they're not going to be able to defend that title simply because there's not going to be a regional meet this year. So everybody gets, uh, gets to uh, participate. Well, the top teams in each district or each region will move on to participate in the state meet again. Right. You know, if that happens ne next year or later on this year. But um, so that's where we stand. Everything is plans are being made, but that doesn't mean they can go through to completion. We just have to wait and see what the numbers are and and how things we don't want it worse. We don't want COVID to get the upper hand. I mean, right now it seems like it is anyway, but we we have and then you've got to look at the safety of the kids and the people involved in it. And I know they all want to play. I know they do. And I'm ready for events and things, you know, but you also don't want to be sick and in the hospital and quarantined and everything else. So we got to take that into consideration whether we want to or not, we have to. But as I said, we've talked about all this. Now the first full day of school where all grades will be going, because they are going to stagger them starting the 11th, will be the 14th of August, and everyone would, all schools, all grades would return to school and on that, that. that also starts your virtual distance students as well. Students that are in the virtual distance, they have to start on the 14th. So when you say all, that encompasses all. Yeah. You know. Well, now you them. do have the option, do you not, that some would be doing it from home? That's what I'm talking about, virtual okay. distances. Okay, okay, yes. From home. Yeah, they, and that's they counted. To, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, I'm, you can't just pick up and leave and say, oh, yeah, I did that. No, that's a counted day just like you were in school. So. You know, in March, back last, year, last school year in March when they had to call it quits, you know, students had the option. Do you want to continue to learn with your teachers or do you want to just take a long vacation? And this, of course, now it's not a it's not an option anymore. You have to. And that's going to take a lot of discipline. Can you imagine, you know, working parents making sure their kids are online doing what they're supposed to be doing? Because down the road, if they miss too many days, it's just end like up if you Judge were going Susan to Melton. school. Exactly. Yeah. You know. yeah, it is. That's one of those things that's going to be so different. Um, but that's all right. We'll, we'll try to work through this. I'm just hoping that a lot of them don't test positive, you know, and that throws it all back into waiting a while longer. But that we'll just have to wait and see how that works. Well, it's kind of like the flu, you know, when kids had the flu and a bunch of classes had the flu. but. What ended up happening at the school board meeting where they introduced what they were going to do with schools this year? Basically, what they would like to do is get through the first two weeks. Just give us a start. And after that, we can adapt. We just need to get the school year started, and then we can adapt to most anything. They're very confident about this because they do have plans in place. So we'll see how it goes. And, you know, it's kind of like, like you said, I've said. Uh, Director Freddie Curtis says it all the time, change, big thing. You have to adapt. What, you know, what may be one minute, it's not going to be the next. <laughs> well, and that is the thing about this whole uh, COVID thing is people don't, ex ex don't accept change easily. A lot of people don't. This thing may change the way we've looked at everything. And your future normal may not be like your past normal. You know, there's, this may affect all of that, and we're just going to have to adapt to a lot of these things that we were so set 
on that we were going to do this or we're not going to do that. You do what you have to uh, to get through this. Your kids have to be educated. And I know as a parent that it's hard to teach your own kids. It's my own kids, you know, because I'm going to tell them, sit down and shut your mouth and listen. You know? <laughs> well, not always can you do that in a classroom. You may want to, because I substitute taught also. And that's a whole different ball game. It sure yes, is. It sure is. And the thing is, your kids have a tendency, if they're at home, to, I don't know, maybe their minds wander a little more when they're at home, you know, and, they, well, I've got to go do this, and I'm going to have to go to the bathroom, and i got to go do this. And I guess keeping them off of their cell phones and everything is a major <laughs> will be a major accomplishment. But when my kids were little, they didn't have that. And I've got to say, it was much easier then. So take you may want to collect all of those um, cell phones and everything before you start school. <laughs> yeah, if, you're, if you've got a kid that's virtual distance learning this year, all I can say is good luck. <laughs> Well, they're more used to it. Kids are, oh, kids, they yeah. can do anything on a computer. You you really think they can't, but they can. They can do anything. And now your cell phone is your computer because that's what they are. Right. The smartphones are just small computers. That's what they are. Smarter than me, for sure. Well, they definitely are me on a lot of areas. Okay, I got another guest who's been sitting over here very quiet. <laughs> very patient, and uh, she's one of these that's had to adapt to a lot of changes. I have Deborah Leach, and she is with our Senior Citizen Center. And of course, one of their biggest fundraisers during the year was the good old days, which of course came right in time for everything to be canceled. <laughs> yes, in May. And there was no way you could virtual distance to that. There's no way, I mean, there's no way you could have used the distancing in that event. It would have been very, very difficult. Yeah, you couldn't have done that. Mm -mm. No, too many people, um, too, too many, many vendors, events yeah. on stage. Pageants, yeah. little kids, big kids, yes. <laughs> entertainment. No, that was definitely a no-no. So uh, she did have to cancel it, but like I say, that was one of your biggest fundraisers. So what have you got in place of that? Deborah? Well, in lieu of good old days, um, our board of directors made the decision um, to try something new and different, which is a Facebook live auction fundraiser. There you go. Yes. And uh, it will be on August 17th, which is coming up very soon. Of course, on Facebook, it will be live. And we have some great partners that are gonna help us, some uh, professionals. Greg Goff is going to be our auctioneer. Greg will do a good job. He will do an excellent job. Um, Candace and Bailey and um, Taylor Jones of Sarah and Alley have become quite celebrities on Facebook. They've done lots of uh, they do. different events, and so they have agreed to help us out and be our co-host. Um, so that will be great as well. And um, our board of directors have worked hard, um, and we've had lots of donations, lots of items to auction. I mean, when I say lots, it's a lot. So <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> How long is this show going to last? Well, we're going to try to keep it within about two and a half hours because it, once we start at seven, and of course we'll have some promotions. We've got some great sponsors, some great donors, a lot of our businesses um, that we want to, you know, give credit to. Um, and then we'll start the auction and hopefully end around 9.30 because people go to bed. <laughs> Oh, it's eventually. <laughs> it's an auction a thon, so like a marathon. So, you so keep... um, but I, I brought a few items to kind of um, give everybody a sneak peek. And also on Facebook, we've been doing some posts. Mm -hmm. So we have I've pictures, and we're planning, since it's in about what, a little over a week, 
um, we're going to try every day to feature some other items just so people will know what will be available. And well, I did see some of them and they were, they were impressive. Yes, and we have such a variety that there's something for everybody. Yeah. And we might want to mention that this uh, Facebook site, uh, Facebook page, is your page, the Cannon County Senior Center, correct? Yes, yes. Okay, and that's where the auction is going to be held. It is. Or originate from. It will. So, yes, so. You, you need to go to the Cannon County Senior, Senior Center Facebook page. If you want to go ahead and kind of follow us and like us on our page, then you'll get notifications or reminders, you know, about the event. Um, but the night of as well. Um, and that again is August 17th at seven. That's a Monday night. I know. So I was trying to think of, yeah, that's as good as any. Well, a lot of people will be home. Yeah, that's what they we, will. What we thought and um, Hopefully, you know. Hey, there's a lot of people at home now, Deborah. Well, there are. <laughs> this is true. But there, you know, the likelihood of there being something else that would interfere, possibly. Yeah, there's maybe not Maybe wouldn't a, be on a Monday night. So. There's not a meeting or a ball game or a well, I'm whatever. Sure there's not meetings. church, you know. I'm sure there's, there's a, a meeting, meeting somewhere. I'm sure there is. <laughs> Always has to be around here. But, but let's show them some of the yeah, items we're now. we really excited about. There's three of these, right? There's and this actually four items, uh, three bowls, and um, another item. That's this, handcrafted, handmade, yes. This one is made out of a Bradford pear. Isn't that wow. beautiful? Real, well, it is beautiful. The it color. is. I love all those. Well, I like wood, but I like all of the bowls and things that they make out of it. And I you do. know, that's one of a kind. And uh, James Adkins is on our board mm -hmm. at the Senior Center, and we appreciate him really um, handcrafting that and making that for our auction. But it is well, the items I seen were very unique. Yes, they were pretty and they yes. were very unique. Uh huh. Jewelry. Carolyn likes this item. This is diamonds, <laughs> and there's also a necklace and earrings to that match. Uh, mm -hmm. that match this set. But I think that is a really pretty. Ring. I don't know if you can see it very well from there. It's a size seven. I'll go ahead and say that as well as um, sterling silver um, with diamonds. That's right. It's very pretty. It is pretty. Very attractive. And then you have tons of artwork, right? Well, we do. We have um, a very generous donor who donated um, 30 um, original artwork. Now these uh, are kind of whimsical, but this I've seen these before, uh, and this, this is, an is a well-known um, artist. Yes, um, Joyce Royball is the artist's name. She does a lot of similar um, paintings of this kind. They are whimsical. Right. They are children. This particular um, art is uh, children playing musical instruments. And I believe there's four in this picture. We have two more from this uh, same artist. Um, and then we have a large variety um, right. of uh, different pieces of art. So we're excited about that. I do have someone who is coming to view these ahead to uh, give me a little bit more of an idea of the value. So we can announce that prior to auctioning the items. Um, but yeah, we're excited about that as well. But we have so many different um, things from uh, handcrafted items to art, to jewelry, to clothes. And you have uh, some talented ladies that go to the senior yes, center, Yes, we do, right? and I, I did bring an item. Go right ahead and show them. <laughs> I think that's very pretty and I love the color. Uh, one of our ladies at the senior center, her name is Jean Morawski. She's very talented um, in crochet. Um, and she made this um, baby blanket. It's kind a little of baby thing. afghan. Yes. Yeah. And yellow can be for male or female. Yeah. It right? Can. I mean, you know, it can. And it'd be hey, beautiful. When they're nursery. first born, they don't know. No. <laughs> they don't know. <laughs> they really don't. But it's still, it would be pretty in a nursery or. It is pretty. For the baby to. It's use. very soft. It's very soft, very yes, dangerous in just the right size. Yes, it is. <laughs> Till they get a little bigger. Yeah. That'll be one 
something they'll drag around with them forever. <laughs> you know, babies usually will get one blanket or quilt or something and they that they kind of attach to mm -hmm. till they're 17, <laughs> I'm not sure, but <laughs> anyway, that may be one of them that that baby would. Um, you are closed at the senior center, right? We are closed to the public. We have been closed uh, since March 18th per um, governor's orders, um, and we are to remain closed. We know through August 29th, um, hopefully we'll be getting some uh, more news, some more direction this month as to when we can possibly reopen. But at this point, we do not know. And so um, the governor has all senior centers across the state of Tennessee closed. They're kind of like you're dealing with a lot of really vulnerable people mm -hmm. uh, age-wise and previous conditions. But not having our senior center has been a lot of people went to the senior center for a lot of different reasons. Some just wanted to go up and talk with other people and see other people, but they did serve them lunch. They did have all kinds of, uh, you had travel films that you showed, right? Where you could. Well, we actually have a travel program where right. we took a lot of uh, trips and those have been postponed or rescheduled and a lot of them till 2021. Right. Travel program, but our exercise program is a really big program. Oh, I bet. Center. I'm just, and, well, I've had people tell me uh -huh. that that was one of the things they missed most yeah. was their exercise and program. We have two or three, and sometimes four exercise classes a day, and some of our classes, um, you know, some of our larger classes have more than thirty. Right. And so when you have large numbers of people together, you know, the chance of spreading the virus or someone has the virus <laughs> is a lot greater. And then you add age and pre-existing conditions. Well, also. now you say so. that, but then <laughs> the one I get the calls about are the music nights. Yes, the music nights. And they want to know if they're doing any dancing. Yes. And so <laughs> well, <laughs> again, governor's orders. <laughs> Um, um, <laughs> prohibit any uh, dancing. Right. Um, live music at, at one point was a possibility and some venues were having live music, um, especially maybe outdoors. Mm -hmm. um, but because of the senior center, um, we have it in the large room, mm -hmm. uh, which is a large area, but still when you have a hundred people in there, you cannot there's no way to social distance um, the way that, um, you know, that we would need to. Well, so, um, so no, there's a lot of restrictions on. Well, you just music. can't. I mean, Deborah's there, and the girl that uh, works for her is there, mm -hmm. but you, no one else is. No, we're close to the public. We are there, and we are available, um, you know, regular office hours from 8 um, to 4, Monday through Friday. Um, we are still getting out some meals um, for those who, who do need those. Um, we certainly answer phone calls. Um, we do make phone calls to check on our members. Um, and we're available to help with what we can. Um, we will still be delivering commodities or having people come by and pick those up. Um, mm -hmm. That will be next week as well. So, um, yeah, we're still there. We're still available. We still uh, print our newsletters every month, and we mail those out um, to over 500 people. Um, so we're, we're still busy, believe it or not. Uh, it has been very busy, and partly because, we, like you said, things have changed. We're coming up with new ideas. Um, well, new ways this of doing takes things. a lot of work. It does take a lot of time. We're, we're wanting it to be very organized. Um, so as donations are coming in, they're being itemized. And so if you want to stay up for this, <laughs> you might take a nap <laughs> and then go to the auction. Mm -hmm. Hey, that I think that'll be fun. It's pretty exciting. We've um, uh, gotten a lot of neat things, and it's pretty exciting to do something a little bit different. Yeah. I'm, I'm a person who doesn't like change, Carolyn. I know. <laughs> well, <laughs> but, sometimes I don't either, Deborah. But this... Um, 
I think this is going to go really well, and we appreciate so much all the hard work. And, and we've had some cash donations as well already. I was going to say, yeah. for those of you who aren't auction people, um, mm -hmm. if you would like to donate to the Senior Center, of course, we want to keep the, you know, when you call things Cannon County, I think people assume that they are totally supported by the county or the government. They're not. They're not. And the senior center is not. They go by donations and fundraisers that they have during the year. Yes, a lot of our funding comes from fundraisers. Um, and that's why we do so many. Right. Yeah. Um, all throughout the year. So we do rely on that. And once we do reopen, you know, there will be a lot of expenses and maybe even extra with all the cleaning and uh, that will go that on gonna, daily that we're going to have to <laughs> hourly. Uh, need. So, so yes. So, um, yeah, join our auction. That's right. Uh, if they do, if somebody does want to make a donation ahead, um, they can go to our website and um, like the art center, we also have um, a donate button where they can donate there if they want or okay. uh, just call the senior center and we'll be glad to provide any information about the auction or our services. 615-563-5304. Um, okay. Thank you, Deborah. Thank you. Now I'm going to talk about some other things. You know, um, like I say, our sales tax numbers have amazingly gone up in the last two months. We contribute that to the fact that people are shopping at home more, which is fine. This is great. Um, our merchants around the square are having, they're celebrating their dog days of summer, which they have every year. And that's going to be August 14th and 15th. That means you can shop in the stores. They'll have discounts and special programs. And also just check out the new businesses around the square. Um, we have a child's, uh, a, a children's shop on the corner. We have a new boutique. It's called Franklin. Dovecoat. Dovecoat, okay. Mm -hmm. She is opened up recently. We have a general store uh, that has opened up, and I believe that that was opened up by the man who owns the Iron Pig now. All of our antique stores are open, but you need to stop in Leland's. Leland sold their original store, and it is now one of our newest members, and that is the MCE Law and Regal Title Company. But they bought the old, uh, well, what I call Woodbury Drug Center. I worked there for 23 years. When I walked in, I could not believe that was the same building. It is beautiful in there. They do such, and it's called Leland. They have glassware, furniture, antiques. Mm. They have everything you could imagine, and it's like going in a high-end store. It really is. If, if you get a chance, go in there because it's worth going in to see. And um, these people are all striving to stay open. So the more help you can give them in your community, the better off you, they are. And we like people to come in there from other counties. <laughs> we're open y'all come in there from other counties, but I'm sure we're not the only ones that are facing this right now because it's really difficult for them. It is, but I think people in this stay-at-home age um, that don't have to go out and work and everything, I think many of them are taking advantage of the businesses that we have right here in Kennett County. Ace Hardware has been busy. Reed's Builder Supply has been busy because I think people that are staying at home maybe doing some building, I'm not sure. <laughs> maybe some painting, I'm not sure. But um, yeah, we, we, um, we wanna try to help them 
stay afloat as best we can. And I'm surprised at the new businesses that have opened up during this. I got to give them credit. If I was going to pick a time, this probably wouldn't have been it. But if it works, that's fine, you know. Um, there has been some incentive money out there, and many of our uh, businesses have taken advantage of that, and it has helped. Uh, some, I think, have had difficulty with it for whatever reason, but um, some have gotten some relief uh, through the PPP and the CARES Act and this type of thing. Also, um, White Oak Craft Fair, of course, has been canceled this year. That was always a big event, and that was another big fundraiser for the Art Center, but it won't, uh, there isn't much way you can social distance that either. The other one that is coming up, um, well, we will have a cruise in on August 22nd. Uh, the one we had this year, this last month, was uh, very light, mainly because it was 100 degrees. And then there were these ominous black clouds <laughs> that kept congregating over Woodbury. Mm -hmm. And those guys that have those cars, they don't want to hear the word hail for sure or possibly rain. You know? <laughs> so I'm sure that was, we had a low count for that one. So we did call it early because it just looked like it was going to open up and yeah, do something really bad. <laughs> it sure did. I was surprised that it didn't. You know? Well, in Woodbury it didn't, but when I got home and I lived be, uh, in the east side area up in that area, it just poured. Yeah. It just opened up and poured, but I don't think it ever did anything in Woodbury. But, but people was, with the cars weren't taking that chance. They were no, they for the you hills. know they were real good about it, but I thought. Okay, this is making me nervous, and I didn't even have one there. So, um, yeah, we, uh, I will say the Cruiser of the Month Award, which was sponsored by um, Polished, uh, Perfectly, Perfectly Polished, Polished Pet Salon. Angela Tate Mullinax is the owner of that, and she sponsored the uh, Cruiser of the Month Award. And, of course, that always goes to the sponsor's choice. And her choice was a yellow falcon, and the owner of that was Steve Holder out of McManville. So he was real proud. He got mm -hmm. to take home a plaque, and we thank um, Angela for sponsoring that because they, she and her mother have always been real uh, good to sponsor the car events around the square. But the next one will be the 22nd four to seven on the square, and the Cruiser of the Month Award this month will be sponsored by O'Reilly Auto Parts. Then on September 26th is the Chamber's only fundraiser that we have during the year, and that's the Color of Fall Car and Truck Show. Right now, we're making plans to go on with that. There may be a few things that will be a little different. Um, we will work those out. But unless things get worse, we will continue to try to have that. Like I say, there may be a, a few changes with it. But um, in order to put it on, then that's what we're probably going to have to do. But like I say, this is one of these things that you don't know what the future is going to bring. And the next couple of months should tell us a lot, so we'll know more by then. But of course, for that show, it's an all-day show. And um, registration starts from 8 until and ends at 12 noon. And then, of course, there'll be over 60 trophies involved that will be handed out and six cash awards. But like I say, registering for that may look a little different because we may have to do that a little differently this year so you don't encourage large groups of people <laughs> at the registration in line that, you know yes. now mm -hmm. as far as for mandating masks you know i'm one of these people that i think okay if wearing a mask 
is going to help curtail this, then I'll do it. You know, it's, it's not that major a thing to me. But I understand that enforcing that is a whole different story. So, you know, if you feel good about wearing a mask, then I feel good for you. Because probably the people that are working in it, from our standpoint, if things are still like they are now, will be wearing one. So I'm just telling you ahead of time. We're not going to tackle you or get you down or beat you up or nothing. We're not going to arrest them. I don't have that authority. Okay. All right, I thought it out. <laughs> no, I don't think any arrest will be necessary, I hope. Anyway, we want you to come to it. We want the car people out there that have always been part of it. Uh, the sponsors that I have called to see if they're willing to sponsor this because it takes a lot to put this car show on have all agreed that they will do it again this year so thank you very much for all my sponsors and i hope we have some more to come on board with this but i will tell you there are some things that go on all the time there are places to go and in woodbury the moonlight drive-in is open Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And you can social distance there. You don't have to wear a mask if you're sitting in your car. Mm -hmm. The thing about it is they're showing old movies. They have two screens, and they're showing older movies, mainly because no new movies have come out. But they had two movies on there last week. They may still be on there that were two of my favorite, and that was A League of Their Own and The Natural. And they were both baseball movies, or softball, yeah, baseball movies. But I love those movies. They've had Grease and Graffiti, and they're playing them all. So, you know, if you don't have access to those and you'd like to see them, that's somewhere to go. And they have a lot of kids' movies uh, that are more for the children that you can take them also. My trouble with watching two movies is the last one, they may have to come wake me up so I can go home. Because <laughs> I'm not doing... like they can turn on a bunch of lights and wake everybody up, right? It's still dark outside when you see these movies, so. But anyway, that is somewhere to go. And another place that's very active and has been during this is the farm, is the uh, uh, flea market. Now, they're open on Saturdays and Sundays, and every time I go by there, that place is packed. Busy. It is. Mm -hmm. But it, we have one of the better flea markets in the area, is that one. Another one that, uh, this one isn't, doesn't last long, mm -hmm. but the Farmer's Market, which is located outside at the Art Center, and they are open, I think, about 7 o'clock, maybe earlier, on Saturdays until everything's gone, you know, or the crowd is gone. And I'm just going to say three words, well, maybe four words, <laughs> homemade fried pies. They're there. I want to tell you, if you mention that, everybody's going, well, who's making them? And so... The lady that makes those, and I believe that's Miss Hollis, if I'm not mistaken, uh, she will be there with her homemade fried pies. And I think it's just worth going down there to get some of them. But if you need tomatoes or squash or cucumbers or green beans or potatoes, and they got it all down there. So visit the farmer's market, and that helps our farmers too. That uh, Because in order to set up there, they have to be... Um, grown on a farm. They can't be shipped in from somewhere else. So if that makes you feel better, then that's where you go get them. We have several boutiques in town. I don't know if people really realize that, but there are several of them, and a lot of them are doing online sales. And you can go on their Facebook pages and see their clothes and the items they have in their shops. Also, we have Sophia's Restaurant, which is fairly new. It's right around the corner from the square right next to the Iron Pig. 
Um, they have great food in there. I've heard rave reviews about that place. Plus, we still have the pizza place, uh, the Pizza's Lions Pizza Den, and also AJ's on the square. And then we have um, all the antique stores, of course. And you know, if you're looking for, um, oh, and don't forget Leland's, because it's, it's kind of like an antique store. I mean, there's antiques in there, but there's everything in there, and it's beautiful. It really is. Okay, if you're looking for furniture or appliances, we have Paul Reed's furniture. They're still on the square, and they'll be happy to accommodate you with anything that you need or maybe something you didn't even know you needed mm -hmm. that you could go in there and find. But um, that store is one of our older businesses on the square. But stop in there and check it out. You may see a couch you had never seen before. So we have still a lot of things. And if you just want to shop, uh, spend the day or spend an afternoon and just go around and see the different things. You have Lynn's Picket Fence. She has a lot of antique items in her store, the Iron Pig. The old feed store antique mall has two levels. Um, I, I can't even name all of the new pl all of the places. And we've got some new construction going on. Uh, we have the new townhouses. I don't know an opening date on them. And they that. may already be rented. No, um, not yet. But not I haven't heard. I haven't heard when they're going to open there, and they're still in construction. It's going to be interesting, though. I don't know if you've seen the way the layout is. Mm -hmm. You've got that back brick, a rock wall back there. Well, don't speed in the driveway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, we could use more of those. Housing is at a premium. In and there's Cannon some developers County. with it their is. eye on Cannon County. In fact, if I remember right, eighty-one thousand dollars exchanged. No, eight hundred and ten thousand dollars exchanged in a week as land transfers here in Canning County and these were just single and we have a house a housing shortage yeah I mean people call me all the time wanting to know if there's anything for rent mm -hmm. you know so this may be the place to be you just never know mm -hmm. you know what that's all we have for you today and we enjoy the fact that you enjoy watching it, or we hope you enjoy it. Well, and one we, other thing. Let's, okay. let's do this. we got some time. Remember that little T-shirt challenge I made last yes. time around? Nobody bit. <laughs> Maybe it was because we didn't tell them where to drop a T-shirt off. I don't. <laughs> True. So let's just open this up again. <laughs> I'm wearing a Cannon County shirt that was uh, done by an artist, Chad... You're gonna have to help me out. Davis. Davis, there you go. And uh, she this was, was over the child advocacy lady center. That was over former director of the uh, child advocacy center. But if uh, since I'm gonna be co-hosting this, if you have a business that you would like to donate a T-shirt for, I wear a large or an extra large. Extra large would be more safer for me. Um, drop it by the courier offices on West Main Street, and uh, when we. Convene next month, I'll wear your shirt. Or if you have a cap, I'll even put your cap on. And uh, it'll promote your business while we're sitting here talking to our guests. So once again, would you do the same you're, thing? You're like a walking billboard. That's what it is. <laughs> would you do the same thing? I don't wear a cap. And probably if you're going to have the... No. <laughs> well, I'll be the sacrificial person here to do those honors, and I will wear the T-shirt and the cap. And if we get more than one per, you know, one per time, then I'll, I won't take it off here in front of the camera. I'll just dart over to the restroom and put the next one on. Ten minutes later, come back and sit. Well, and we have a show every month. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, there's how many businesses do we have here in Canyon County, and, but you got to be a member of the chamber. Got to be a member of the chamber, and uh, that's, that's the only requirement that I have. Okay. So hopefully we'll get some people dropping some shirts off over at the... I'm going to tell you, if you have a political ad, you need to talk to this guy. He can walk 
<laughs> oh, great. I'm going to get... Actually, we're, we're, we're through with that after Thursday for a little while until November. Hey, listen, so. our early voting has gone well. Oh, yeah. yeah. It may not go in my favor, but it's gone well. <laughs> but there's been a lot of people that have taken advantage of it. There has been. Okay. The man that's running the camera is telling me that I need to end this up. Is there anything else that you not want to that, do? <laughs> not that spontaneously comes to mind. I'm sure after the camera stops, it'll... it'll. Well, I'm glad. <laughs> I'm glad for that. And I want to thank you for watching. And everybody out there, be safe. This is serious times that we're going through. So do your best to help yourself and your neighbor. This is a time when we have to think of each other. And we hope to see you all next month.